So, I got my uh, saw and flat lap set up. So I'm gonna do some cutting and polishing. I'll probably, um, probably do like a couple videos. Maybe one cutting video and then a polishing video. So I'll just show you the stuff that I am gonna do some uh, do, uh, cut. So first is this piece of Gogondon Tillite. It's a type of conglomerate. It's like uh, pudding stone. If uh, any of you guys know pudding stone, pudding stone is also a conglomerate. This is um, a conglomerate of basically glacial till, hence the name Tillite. And it originates near um, Gaugonda, Ontario, which is close to actually the or site of origination of also the pudding stone that lots of people find down south uh, in the U.S. Uh, by the Great Lakes and stuff. Some of it can be found in Ontario at like the source site and then there's also like closer to London. I have friends who found it. Here's the piece of felspar. This actually was a test cut that I have done. I'm gonna cut it along this plane because this plane has some um, mm. like shine to it. So I wanna cut it evenly there so that that gets, that can be nice and polished. I think this is unikite. It's got some like green pieces and then like the kind of like reddish feldspar. It's hard to tell, but I thought I'd cut this piece because it looks interesting. I know the white is most likely quartz. I don't know what the green is, but the, you can see the streaks throughout it. So I thought it'd be an interesting piece to cut. I'm probably gonna cut it, how was I gonna cut it again? I was gonna cut it sideways and then I'll also cut it horizontal in a way that shows both patterns because it's got streaks going this way uh, but then you can see this, like the layering here. And I kind of want to get both of that eventually when I polish. So I think I'm going to cut this stone twice. Uh, what else? Here's another green and white rock. I think the white might be calcite because it's, if you see the white around here, like the, the white rock has kind of just been uh, eroded away. Like it's almost been melted and then the green mineral has stayed. So I think this is like a calcite epidote mix or something. I found it in the farm field. I'm a little unsure on what it is, but I thought it'd be cool. Here's a green rock with lighter green veins. I thought cutting maybe along the veins would be interesting. Um, here is a piece of, what is it? I'm mind blanking, um, stromatolite. So this is a piece of stromatolite. So I'm gonna cut it along here so I can get a nice flat piece and polish it because I think it'll polish nicely. You can see these like faint lines and stuff. I think that would look really nice polished up. And here we go, the final piece. This is what's called cuni cuneiform or graphic granite. And that's because it's got Basically crystals of quartz, you can see it, like needles of quartz growing through the feldspar crystal in a way that you get like this kind of pinprick wavy pattern and it kind of looks like cuneiform or some kind of like written language, like ancient written language. So it's called graphic granite. And I'm probably going to cut this flat thin piece off because that's really not useful and then cut a big chunk out at the top at the thickest part and then polish that and see what that looks like. But yeah, let's get to um, cutting. It'll probably just be like a, um, a time-lapse, like time-lapse portions, and then I'll show you the cut pieces. So here's that feldspar, might shave off more of it, 
but I might just do have polished it out. There's just a bit. Yeah, that's what it looks like. This is what the tillite looks like cut up. It's a little underwhelming if I'm going to be honest. So I might just cut more slabs and see if there's more interesting stuff deeper in. But yeah, that's what Felgonda tillite looks cut up. Kind of like dark green with red and lighter green and black spots. So here's the stromatolite, as I thought it would, it has these beautiful faint lines and swirls in it, where you can see basically like the growth layers of the, the colony, it was, this is a, a stromatolite is a, um, a fossilized microbial colony, and you can see how it, this is where it started off and then it grew outwards, and you can see basically what you see here the swirls and the lines are the uh, growth rings of the quote unquote, um, well, not quote unquote, of the uh, stromatolite. So this is the green and white mystery stone that I didn't really know what it, what it was, but I believe the white might be calcite and the green might be some type of, type of epitope. I found this on a farm field. Um, but yeah, I actually really like this. It turned out really nice. You can see the beautiful dark bluish green color and then the white, kind of the splotches of white. I think I might cut it cut a couple slabs out of this one and see which ones are the nicest. So, uh, sometimes you get these hidden faults and cracks in your stuff, and so when you're cutting them, um, you, uh, they break on you. And that's exactly what happened with this piece. But you can see here, so this is the cuneiform uh, granite or graphic granite, and you can see here how it looks like some kind of like ancient script or something. It's got some really cool patterns because of how the crystals grew. But yeah, I'll have to salvage something out of that this piece. But yeah, apparently there was a, uh, a crack running through it. So I, as I was cutting it, it just broke apart. I, once I hit the crack, the fracture. But I think I can still, if I trim it off here, I can take this piece and polish this piece at least. Because 
This has some nice designs on it. So this is a piece of Unikite that I found uh, while uh, looking for arrowheads in a farmer's field. It, this turned out much nicer than I thought it would. It's got some very nice patterns to it. It's very, um, kind of almost reminds me of like those, du those large dust clouds you have in space. Those multicolored dust clouds. You can see it's actually Turned out very nice. The inside has some very nice patterns to it, so I'm quite impressed. So I'm, I'll probably actually cut this thinner and maybe get a couple slabs out of it to see which slab looks the nicest and polish that up. And then the other stuff I might have for other projects in the future. But yeah, I was quite impressed with this one, actually. Turned out very nicely. They can't all be winners. This one didn't turn out as nice as I thought it might. Uh, interesting still, but I don't think I'm going to do a lot with this. Probably nothing at all, maybe. Or maybe, maybe I'll try and take a slice off here because it seems all the interesting stuff is with these lighter green veins. So who knows, maybe farther in there's more veining and then that small section I'll do something with that. But... This is probably just going to go on the back shelf for now. So, this one turned out really nicely. It's a uh, quartz mixed with some kind of, I think it's, I don't know, some kind of green inclusions. And it turned out very nicely. You can see the colors very well. The, let's see, that a little more wet. You can see how nice the uh, green colors pop in the white quartz. This I actually just pulled out of uh, a uh, rock bed at my mother's uh, at my mother's work. They have this rock bed on the side, and I was helping there, doing some uh, clean up in the gardens and stuff. And I just saw this one there, and it just interested me. Yeah, but I'm quite quite happy with this machine so far. It cuts very nicely. Minimal saw marks. There are saw marks, but it's not like super scratchy like a. Uh, the stuff I used to use to cut stuff once in a while. Since we reached the end of this video, I thought I'd show you some of the pieces that I was most impressed by. The stromatolite, the uh, unikite, and the quartz with green inclusions. Um, but this is the end of the video. If you like this kind of stuff, please do uh, like and subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. And please leave a comment in the, in the, in the bottom saying which which of the stones i cut in this video you like the most <laughs>